All right, welcome back everybody for some more Grand Dukes of the West, Lords of that same cardinal direction. Last time we started the Burgundian campaign with a kingdom divided. So next up we will be continuing with our new sieve with the wolf and the lion. I hope I get to be the wolf, because, uh, you know, Ornlu a wolf. And the Starks are the good guys, right? Right. Actually, I, I was more of a House Martell person myself. Powerful man in France. Sorry about that. But his rivals, the House of Armagnac, had not been idle. Now led by the fearsome Count Bernard, they built an alliance against John that included the Dukes of Orléans and Bourbon and the Count of Alençon. Bernard sent bands of ravaging mercenaries into the lands controlled by John to draw him out. For John, this was the last straw. He marched his army out of Paris to face the Oh, I don't get to be the wolf. Either. And so France fell headlong into a war that would last for decades. Oh, so is this the origin of the Hundred Years' War? Uh, drive out the Ecochere in uh, out of Ile de France, which, uh, in case you don't know, is the region of France uh, in which Paris is located. Uh, the Burgundians can advance to Imp and support a pop limit of 200. Wow, we're already on scenario 2 out of 6, and we're already able to get to Imp. We start in Castle Age with 200 pop. That's, like, ramping up real fast. Uh, concentrate... Excuse me, on liberating Ile de France in the beginning, you will need a base before you can engage the uh, Armagnacs. Uh, neutral villages can be found all over the map. If you manage to capture one, its inhabitants will produce resources for you. Control of a village is determined by the ownership of the converting torch in the center of it. Keep in mind that the, your enemies can also occupy villages or take villages back from you. Oh, oh, is this like uh, Dracula 2, where it's like you're playing a game of Risk? Hmm, that's really cool. I think I thought that scenario was like a really cool concept, and it's just like the execution. It wasn't bad, but it like it could have been better. So I wonder what this one is going to be like, or how it's going to differ from that. Uh, there are several ways to achieve victory. Okay, so you don't have to wipe out all your enemies completely. Uh, your scouts report: John the Fearless's forces have assembled west of Paris to end the terror that the Ecochers have brought over Ile de France. The Ecochers are mercenaries from southern France and have been hired by Bernard de Armagnac. Their men-at-arms, crossbows, and light cav initially control Saint Cloud in the west. Uh, neutral villages are all over the map. Uh, Bernard de Armagnac is the leader of the rival league and has gathered his forces to the north. His army consists of heavy cav swordsmen and crossbows. He also constructs trebs. Three other influential dukes have forged an alliance with Bernard. John of Bourbon, Bourbon, in Morocco we call it Bourbon, Controls a large domain to the southeast and commands a huge army uh, consisting mostly of infantry. John of Alençon controls the western part of the map. He will send crossbows, pikes, mangoes your way. Charles of Orléans has set up his camp to the south. His forces consist of knights, skirms, and rams. English mercenaries have been sighted to the northwest. It might be possible to recruit them, but could become an expensive enterprise. Hmm, does this mean that... Like, we would continuously recruit them for a little bit, but then we'd have to keep on paying them? I'm already, like, uh, really intrigued by this. What is this, the American Civil War? Anyway, we've got our Coustier. Wielding their, uh, their naginadas of balance. Alrighty. I wonder what the average attack of this unit is. Like, the uh, the mean. I'm not too sure what the exact recharge time is, but, like, if you take into account... Okay, they get the one super insane attack, and then they get a really mediocre attack for a while. You know, what does that uh, average out to being? Probably still fairly high. Anyway, it seems like these guys are going to be kind of pushovers. I know, famous last words and all that, but they're not really grouping up together very effectively. I mean, I guess they are mercenaries. John the Fearless has pretty lousy stats, unfortunately. 
Get him! Uh, I already lost one of my mods. I'm so good at this game, guys! It's not like this is already my second attempt at this recording. Because I forgot to turn on or turn off small trees. <laughs> nah, I, I didn't get. I, I literally only got to. Uh, as soon as I clear out all of the mercenaries, we get this village. And then I realized I didn't have uh, big trees enabled. Mercenary scum is ousted. Quickly, clear the debris and build a camp. Bernard and his vile companions will attack soon. We need to be prepared when the battle begins. Okay. Now we have big trees. Wow, that is a really lousy lumber camp. Okay. What to do? Kind of have some villagers scattered out everywhere. So we can defeat Bernard de Armagnac, defeat the three allies, or capture four relics. Wait, we can either defeat one guy, or we can defeat three guys, or capture four relics. Huh. I guess uh, Bernard himself is going to be uh, much scarier. I'm not too sure about like the whole villages mechanic though. Not hide here and that's ah. the initiative. <laughs> Speak of the devil. There are numerous villages in the region that we should occupy before the Armagnacs can. Okay, um let's just strike out right now. Si, bonjour. I actually have several docks. But that one doesn't have any fish nearby. And our village is still a little bit on fire, but, you know, it's okay, it's okay. Also, everybody is Franks, except for us, who are Burgundians, obviously. The Almanacs have gained control of a village. Oi! This cannot go unchecked. Which one? Ah, this one. But yeah, um, oh, and the English mercenaries are... English, Britons. Duh. Oh, they're actually scouting around, so they're not like a dummy AI. At least not completely. Everyone's scores are actually fairly even. Interesting. So let's see what this is like. I assume we can't build more military buildings. Or, no, we can. We can build everything. Hmm. Not the greatest woodlands in the world. Yeah, I'm really interested as to what the scenario is. Captured a village. Its inhabitants will gather resources for us now. Oh. Wait. You Burgundians are a rich people, they say. And it is known that you're always looking for capable soldiers. We are at your disposal. If you can afford us, of course. Of course. Ooh, they have a castle and everything. Uh, so yeah, of course we'll go ahead and buy those mercenaries. Anyway, uh, it would behoove us... To just send our mounted units around and just capture all the villages. And then, like, leave one long swordsman there. Like, it's, they're not going to actually, like, hold it against any sort of attack, but they're just going to make sure random scouting units don't take it from us, you know? Uh, 
Okay, we should have enough resources. English mercenaries, boom. Ah, here they are. Kind of goofy looking towers here. But I wonder, like, 500 gold is not, like, an expensive enterprise, or whatever they called it in the, uh, the hints. There's Jean de Alençon. But is he the Duke de Alençon? I don't actually know. Oh, oh, oh. Franks don't have keeps, you cheater. Oh, wait a minute. What are our multiple paths to victory? Zero three Armagnac allies defeated. I mean, I just kind of ran through their towers, but whatever. Oh, we can defeat Bernard de Armagnac, defeat their allies, or capture four relics, and this, this is just the village counter. Huh. So wouldn't defeating the one guy be easier than defeating the three guys? Considering everyone's in Castle Age. Ooh, and Red's already helping us out against Blue. Uh, do we have stone? Oh, this is a nice spot for another town center. I mean, we really do have the opportunity to get a massive eco up and rolling. Oh, here's some stone. Ooh, and some boar. Some oink oink pig. Crap. Come on. Have there be space for a TC? Oh, this would be such a good TC spot. But alas. Alas, alas. Here's yellow. Oh, oh, look at this. Um, whoever designed this actually did put a good amount of thought, it seems. Oh, uh, whatever. Yeah, what else is new? Okay, so we did lose all those villagers. You know, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, and we are fairly vulnerable here. Okay, that's plenty. Start getting some techs. We do have a monastery, so we're just going to grab a university so we can pick up. My men have admired their shiny but polished armor long enough. Bonjour. It is time to crush these Bokundian upstarts. All right, Jean de Bourbon. I don't actually know, but I assume the county in which bourbon whiskey comes from. The Armagnacs now control all villages in the vicinity. How could you allow this to happen, men? Quickly, recap to the village before it is Well, they're obviously very active. Uh, let's get some more stables up and running. I need to wait a little bit for him. 20 TCs on my own. Four. Can easily go up to five. That sound of the is not thunder. It is the sound of marching boots coming to destroy you. How dumb do you think I am? That sounds very different than thunder. Remember that name well, John. Oh wait, that is the Duke de Lanson. Okay, so we're going to be getting attacked from quite a lot of different areas. There's a Bernard hitting him. See. Oh, 
Okay, we do have enough for a castle. Uh, I guess let's put this rather centrally located, shall we say? That was a close thing. We have taken back one of the villages just in time. Do not allow them. Is, does something really bad happen to us if we... control of all of the settlements again. Like, does something, like, actually happen? Other than them getting a bunch of resources. Ah! Okay, so they are not shy at attacking us. Noted. Already pretty messy, but we are kind of in the middle of the map. First the Black Plague and now this endless war. Um. Well, I mean, in in modern day France, it's relatively peaceful. Relatively. At least they're not super engaged in any mass scale wars. No, oh, I mean there is there is the COVID. That that's pretty much as bad as a war. So yeah, it's a little rough. So much wood in the bank. You know, at least this TC is now fitting with the aesthetic of the village. Really, that was all part of the plan. Oh, that's right, Burgundian vineyards. Gives her. killed my father. And somehow evaded justice for this heinous crime. But my day has come. I will have my vengeance. So and does it will be sweet. Great for you, man. So Hey, stop it. Does blue never attack you? Okay, now red's kind of eased up on their uh, their attacks. I feel like it would be more fun to take out the all of his allies because you know you're fighting lots of different enemies. It's not just like okay, let's just attack the one big base. So let's go ahead and try that. Go ahead and grab Paladin since it's super cheap with this sieve. 650 food, 375 gold? Yeah, that's so insane. But again, guys, remember, no bloodlines with this sieve, so the paladins themselves are not top tier by any means. Also, the sieve is uh, pretty sad when it comes to uh, siege. Bonjour. Uh, let's start with yellow, because why not? Got some gold and stone over here. How'd you get all the way over there? Sure, let's go to the castle. Oh, let's not do Flemish Revolution. I've seen Flemish Revolution once. I was casting a game of Viper on my Twitch stream, which you should totally follow. It's in the description of every single one of my videos. Um, but... Like, the game was relatively even. Viper got Flemish Revolution against Hera, and then Viper just died instantly. Because it turns out that having, you know, a huge army that you can't sustain is eventually still going to die in most cases. So everyone else is still only in Castle Age. I haven't found any relics yet, but my scouting isn't impeccable by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, hey, there's Paladin. You are nothing but a devious murderer who has escaped justice for far too long. But mark my world's germ. I will right this wrong. Well, I'll wrong this right or something. 
nosotros Bati. Capture him. Oh, let's get chemistry. Vosotros. Y this war is cruel. Many of my men have already ah, paid yes. their lives. I am afraid that we will need more money if you want us to continue risking our necks for you. So if we're going to have to make this like a constant thing. Uh, let's go ahead and grab coinage. I have 52 on food. It feels like I have nowhere near enough food. Okay, blue does attack us as well. Didn't I get chemistry? Oh, got it. Get some extra attack on our cap rams. I like the scenario already, though. Yeah, no siege engineers, no siege ram with this sieve. Uh, not that great. I suppose we should mix in some hand cannons. Get their extra attack with Burgundians. Oh, I never got my Imperial Age upgrades. Whoops. Here we are. We got our extra attack bombard cannon. But no siege engineers, so that's not as great as you would think. Let's have more than one villager build this perchance. Let's grab that. Wait, didn't I tell a bunch of these guys? Nope, they all died. At least you're still there. Yeah, let's just get these hand cannons to help deal with the pikemen. I mean, hand cannon plus paladin is like the classic army combo of like doom for uh, Franks and Persians. Bombards. Didn't I hockey you guys? Let's get, let's get another castle up in here. Masonry. Oh, docks are gone. Not worth it. See, I am curious as to how Burgundian hand cannons with their extra four attack are going to perform against cavalry in particular. Because versus infantry, they already get like a bajillion base of bonus damage, as in 10. 
but they get a bunch of bonus damage. So, extra four attack, I mean, it's good, but it's not, like, super, super exciting. But versus cavalry, hand cannons were already not that bad. But of course, you do miss the last armor upgrade. Uh, what is it? Science to the south, right? No, science to the east. Greens to the south. Anyway, the Duke of Alençon, probably regretting his decision making in life. Ooh, lots of gold over here. You're running out of it. Quick. Let's get a castle over here, actually. Oh, uh, we actually could go for Bombard Towers with the Civ, but this isn't really like a... I don't think we're going to really want to, like, slow push this. I think we're going to want to use the mobility of our cavalry to kind of... Strike at a bunch of different areas at once. Let's get some siege workshops here to the south. Let's get that guy. Where did I build the university? Here it is. Uh, why aren't they resigning? Oh, they have a relic in there. I wonder if capturing the four relics... We'll have to see after the scenario ends, because I really don't feel like hunting down a bunch of random relics. Um, but let's see where they are once the scenario ends. That... Oh, literally having a castle right here. Also grab, like, having Hussar for half cost. Really nice. Just trying to find out where the heck they are. There we go. Rubble shall not stop us. Watch your back, John, because this is far from. Oh. You think Zod. that targeting my allies will stop? For every head that you cut off, two new ones will grow in its place. I'm sure. We will not stop until your blood waters our precious French soil. I'm not too sure who did this campaign, but the fact that. You had the Duke de Lonson say that you Burgundian rebel sh shall not stop us. In Joan of Arc 2, when you face the initial Burgundians, uh, the Duke de Lonson says, This Burgundian rebel shall not stop us. So that alone makes me think that this is a Bassi campaign. Since Bassi always has those uh, throwbacks. I've done an exceptionally poor job at maintaining control of these towns. I mean, like, but we get a pretty good eco without them. Okay, 
onward and upward. Okay, they also have a relic. Wait, if, it, if it's capture four relics, and it's like each enemy has a relic, that's kind of lame because it's not really a different uh, objective. Because it's like, defeat all enemies to get their relics. Also, you can defeat all your enemies. But we'll see. And anyway, our army's looking pretty sick at this point. Bustier, Paladins, Gunpowder Units. And it actually is possible to go Paladins plus Bustier, I think, in rated games, just because the Paladin upgrade is so affordable, relatively speaking. Like, it's still pretty expensive, but maybe if you, like... What if you made the Bustier, like, really expensive? to get, like, a similar effect. And then you, like, would just incorporate, like, a few of them into your army. But you still, like, would mainly focus on Paladins. This war is cruel. And many of my men have already paid with their lives. I am afraid... Fine. ...that we will need more money. If you want to continue risking our neck. Okay, I guess let's go reclaim that village over there. Get him. Wait, are they deleting stuff? Or did those buildings just... Okay, yeah. You cannot stop an orphan with nothing left to lose. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, it seems like Cyan's a little far away. Uh, but we have tons and tons and tons and tons of resources. So yeah, it's like you can defeat three Castle Age enemies, one Imperial Age enemy, or gather four relics. Okay, there's a relic over here as well, and you don't actually need to defeat Blue. I mean, it's like out on the outside of his base. Why did you guys stop? Let me get all the way over here. Let's go get this village too. Okay, here's some mills from Jean de Bourbon. Got it. Okay, so they do have some stuff over here. Just kind of see what's up. Map's pretty big, obviously. Go 
Zoto. Be ready. Oh, what's all that? Oh, okay, here's another monastery. So, one, two, three, four relics. And this relic was, I think, technically outside their walls as well. As was this one. Okay, so the relics, you don't need to defeat all your enemies. It's just kind of like you do it like a smash and grab. Because your, each of your enemies does have a relic. It's not like they're just scattered around. Or if they are, then your enemies will pick them up pretty quick. I get it. I get it. Well, it's a random unit that's running around. Almost have all the villages. Okay, lag. That was weird. Oh, is he not walled? Oh, no, he is. But this part isn't walled and seems to have a lot of his eco. Okay, what is this lag? Is it in game? No. Uh, don't know. Looks like it's gone. What? Come on, man. Claim it with villagers. Kind of goofy, like a uh, go all the way around to get to the cast. Anyway, I'm sure Red is like kind of keeping the uh, Bernard de Armagnac off of our backs. Oh, they have another PC over here. Okay. Oh, we lost this one too. Let's see if we can get all of them at once. But, looks like we might even just win. Yeah. That is fine, that is fine. A curse on you, Burgundian dogs! They actually underestimate you, John. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Come on, get it! Get it! Oh, ne never mind. <laughs> the Armagnac Alliance was broken. For now. But even as he was victorious on one front, John faced a serious setback in Paris. A revolt by the Butcher's Guild, which was loyal to Burgundy, had spiraled out of control, and the Burgundians and their loyalists were expelled from the city. John retreated to his domains in Burgundy to regroup, but he would not be able to rest easily. Across the sea, an old foe of the French had been lying in wait, anticipating the right moment to strike. For Henry V, the King of England, that moment had now come. Oh boy. All right. That's a pretty sick kitty. It was a pretty cool scenario. Pretty cool scenario. I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, we kind of scouted out everything. Good stuff. Anyway, that was The Wolf and the Lion. Thank you guys so much for watching. And next up will be The Cleansing of Paris. And I'll see you guys next time.